Welcome back, DJ <laughs> Joe, DJ Mike in the house, buildassetsonline.com. What's going on, Mike? <laughs> just so you guys know, this stuff isn't scripted. I, I, don't, I don't know what's coming, just like you don't. So <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Today, we're going to be doing an Empire, um, Empire Flippers review. We're going to be doing it from both sides of the equation because we've bought a site and sold two sites via Empire Flippers. And we've also bought a site off Empire Flippers and we're planning on selling another one off Empire Flippers. So we kind of have a decent amount of experience to draw from here. Uh, so we're going to talk about it. Should you sell your site on Empire Flippers? Should you buy your site on Empire Flippers? What do you do? Um, so so let's get right into it, Mike. Let's talk about the the selling side first. What do you think? How was the how was the experience? Why don't you walk everyone from A to Z, how it goes, like what happens when you decide you want to sell your site on Empire Flippers? Mm -hmm. So when you decide you're going to sell a website, essentially you, um, I think you place a little bit of money down just to show that you're serious, get some skin in the game, and then Empire Flippers will essentially handle the entire process for you in terms of making sure they have they you know that you give them all the documents that that are necessary for them to go ahead and, and resell or put for sale your website so you need to have basically all the sales history of your website and with drop shipping this can be pretty complicated because there's not it's not just like amazon is paying you every month you have different orders and refunds and things like that so it's a little bit tedious to get them the profit and loss statements for what they um so they can you know list everything but i think you know the first time we sold the, our website back in 2006 no sorry 2000 um 17 17 it was 17 or 18 I don't know. uh versus the last time we sold it which was 2019 they definitely improved their process when it comes to buying a shopify site and they are very thorough with making sure that your information is vetted so there does need to be a system in which they can prove that your numbers are accurate and your revenue is, you know, all that it, it's said to be and stuff like that. But with that being said, having sold websites, you know, we do things as honestly as possible and we don't try to deceive anybody, but they really don't have a way to know if your profit numbers are 100% accurate. And that's because with a Shopify site, you're getting invoiced from a dozen different suppliers and there's no way they're going to go and backtrack from for each of your orders as to what the exact profit was so in that case if you're buying a website that is a, a drop shipping website from someone you do have to do a lot of due diligence and make sure that you know invoices and general margins are what the seller says they are but other than that from a selling standpoint i think they do a really 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 good job of presenting your information in a way that convinces their buyers that they're getting a good product. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, you know, they This video is not sponsored by Empire Flippers, by the way. This is actually our perspective after using them for- Right, no, years. no, it's not It's not uh, sponsored whatsoever. Um, if we could, if I wanted, I guess we can get into the buying um, side of things a little bit and then we'll kind of, uh, merge everything together so we bought kind of a cheap site off empire flippers an seo based site it was in the 20 to thirty thousand dollar range it was an old site um and actually when we bought it i think me and mike were kind of a little bit too gung-ho in terms of buying a site um because we i guess we were at the point where like look oh man we're like doing so well we're doing so well with dropshipping like let's reinvest some of this money um, in, into a site that's making money passively. And, uh, the site ended up having, having some problems with, uh, something that I definitely mm. couldn't foresee. Um, so we kind of evaluated it on its SEO merits, which the SEO, uh, is doing, still doing well for the site. And it has always, it's continued to do well in terms of the organic traffic that it brings. But as soon as we acquired the site, it immediately ran into problems with Google AdSense, um, you know, taking back a lot of the money that we earned. And then, um, you know, it actually, we actually had the site on Ezoic. Um, and then they basically said, we can't use the site anymore. And then they took back the money that we, uh, that we earned with them too, along with money from all of our other sites. But it all stemmed from this one site that we bought on, on Empire Flippers. Um, 
Now, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that's anything that is the fault of Empire Flippers or anything like that. But Well, I think that is like a key thing to point out is that there is no way for these people that work at Empire Flippers, for one, to like understand the depth of someone's actual website and of all the inner workings of the business. It's impossible to vet all of that, especially when you're buying things that are like under half a million dollars. It's not – while that may seem a lot of like a lot of money to anyone listening to this, and to us it is, um, Just it, but, but it's really not in the scale of like transferring different um, assets. So there's not going to be the same level of due diligence that Empire Flippers goes through or whoever goes through to determine like how well things are working or like if there's any – little things going on in the background that could possibly cause an issue later. Yeah, and let's also not forget that no matter how much in, in um, due diligence that Empire Flippers does, when it comes to predicting the actions of a company like or uh, Google and Google AdSense and SEO, you know, there's only so much due diligence that's that's going to happen. I mean, we've seen sites that you know, for example, like that site Dr. Axe that was huge, 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 probably could have sold for a ton of money on Empire Flippers because it did well for years and years and years. Um, did peep, did they see the medic update coming, Empire Flippers? I highly doubt it. So there's always that 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 X factor. Is that the right there's that there's that aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. But what I'm referring to is so that website that we bought, it got it it got the money taken away for like the last thirty days or sixty days. Because of um, what they quoted as invalid traffic. Yeah, and that's a, that, so, that's a problem. I mean, that's been a problem for other publishers as as well. It's not just that site. It's not just, but yeah. The, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is that it's a hard thing to actually diagnose. Aside from all the algorithm updates that go on and all the changes that private companies like Google, or I guess I guess they're not they're public, but whatever you want to call it, like Shopify, Google that they can make with their algorithms and the way that they do business, that aside, it's still hard for a company like Empire Flippers to go in and look at, okay, the analytics look like you're getting a lot of direct traffic, so this might mean that you know, you're know, you at a higher percentage of getting penalized. Like they, they cannot predict or know that stuff, and as someone who's buying websites, you really do have to know what you're getting into because – you can see all the, you know, the earnings statements and all the traffic and it may look good on that side, but if you don't have some sort of familiarity with the business that you're getting into, it's easy to be blindsided. Yeah, and you know what, Mike, I have a little bit of a gripe with the way that Empire Flipper is, and I guess you can blame this on the market as well. I have a gripe that they tend to price paid traffic stuff lower than organic traffic stuff. And it's for exactly that reason is because, in my opinion, paid traffic is so much more valuable. If you can prove a site can be profitable with paid traffic, I mean, to me, that is – that's that's the best thing you can ask for because that means mm. you just have a faucet that you can turn on and off. Now, while organic traffic is – you know, I guess you can argue that you, there's nothing to turn on and off. You don't have to mess around with the ad platform. You know, it might be better for someone that wants something that's uh, more in the, passive. Uh, yeah, Us. in quotes, in quotes, more passive. Because I mean, it might not. You know, you still have something you got to monitor, or something you have to stay on top of is your organic traffic. Um, but yeah, I, I really, th I think paid traffic is better. To be honest with you, uh, I, yeah, I, they I th definitely, they definitely do value those sites higher. And um, yeah, I think just from our experience that. Uh, a content site that you buy, even though it's passive right now, if you can't turn something on and off, then you don't have control over it. So while it may be you know, nice and easy and passive right now, there, there can be an update. And if it changes your traffic in a way that's negative for you, then you don't know you, – you're not gonna really going to be equipped with the knowledge of how to bring it back. Yeah. So and so there's no – also there's no telling when that, that traffic change is going to come. So the question of, okay, like – is having supplier relationships and paid traffic more risky than relying on an algorithm? I don't agree with that. I think the dropshipping side is less risky and it's easier to rebound if something happens. But 
that Empire Flippers does seem to value these like Amazon websites and content websites over dropshipping websites. Yeah, I mean, and that could be a symptom of what the market demands. But I think the market is uh, is wrong in that, and that's something that actually might go in the other direction as yeah. as time goes on. Because <clears throat> you know, really, yeah. these these organic like these sites that are relying solely on organic traffic, they're much less of a stable and a, like a real business than someone that can advertise has a good business relationships and can just make money that way. I mean, that's to me, that's a more, that's a real, that's a real business. That's what a, that's what a business does. It's not just relying on like a single exploit of the, uh, of the organic rankings. So, yeah. And you're right. It's not necessarily the fault of empire flippers because if you told empire flippers, like I'm not, I'm not going to sell this website unless I'm getting 36 X and it's a drop shipping website. They'll say, you know, okay, like we can we can listen at that, but no one's gonna buy it. So they they know their buyers and they, they know what types of valuations they can get for different, you know, yeah, online yeah. assets. And so it's not it's not that's not their fault. That's our opinion as to, you know, maybe there's something they could do to convince their buyers that these assets are more valuable. But um yeah, we but I yeah. think you know the way that we do things might be slightly different than other drop shippers that are on the website. Some people do things very similarly, but um, if you look at the the industry report from 2018 or 2019 that Empire Flippers put out, we're actually in there as an example of a website that got um, like on the higher end of a valuation for what our drop, one of our drop shipping sites. Yeah, let's so. let's transition a little bit from from talking about this to talking more about. The process of so you list your site up, Mike. It's on Empire Flippers. Then what happens? You get an influx of potential buyers coming in. From the selling perspective, what does that look like? So it's really just a matter of giving people access to your analytics, just read access so that they can see what's going on. They can begin to do some initial due diligence. And then Empire Flippers, they do work well with those people who place deposits on the website to sort of get access to your information. And um, really try to make the sale for you. So, in that aspect, like they're they are super valuable because they have they have a lot of you know buyers that trust them, and they do a good job of you know managing these these leads for you. And really, all you have to do is just sit back, hop on a couple seller calls, um, and then usually they can seal the deal. Like if one of them is going to bite. So, um, so just yeah, I don't. Describe those seller calls for us. I think a lot of people would be interested to hear, you know, what those are like. Yeah. So um, Empire Flippers will arrange a time that works for the you, the seller, as well as a potential buyer, and then you'll hop on a call. Empire Flippers will be there to sort of, um, what's the word? Facilitate. Manage, facilitate the direction of the conversation. Make sure the proper points are being touched, and then. Um, you know, the the buyer is free to ask whatever they want about the site, get to know you, get to understand how the business works a bit better. And then Empire Flippers does typically try to prompt the potential buyer to make an offer or set a specific time that the buyer will have to come back and make an offer. So this does seem to work well. I think with basically, I mean, I don't know if we've sold 100% of the things that we put on Empire Flippers. One time I tried to sell my Kindle business and then I decided not to do it, but I did have offers and I did do some calls. And so um, no matter what it is, you can usually get your your product or your, your online assets sold, like no matter what, if you're just willing to wait, you know, yeah, even if yeah. three months, four months. Yeah. And if I recall correctly, Mike, don't they usually have like a slot, like a PowerPoint, like kind of prepared um, for the call? For the and they they kind of go through the PowerPoint and then it then you talk to the buyer. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I recall that. Now that you bring it up. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that, those are all interesting details to touch yeah. on. I think because it is it's part of the, the overall experience, and I think really that's a very good thing that they do, keeping it so organized. Um, because mm -hmm. you know from the pe perspective of people selling sites, especially if it's like your first time selling a site, you know, you're probably not going to be able to compile what's valuable, um, 
to to the potential buyer and then obviously you're not going to have the reach and you know have, having to facilitate all the meeting times all that kind of stuff um i think i think they yeah. do a good job with that let's talk as about- well as like the follow-up and and stuff like that and we've done a couple calls as well being um being the potential buyers and i don't think we ever bought anything from that the one website that we did buy we kind of just pounced on it immediately because yeah. we you know we we knew it was gonna get bought quick but um they these things are very eye-opening and, and that's where your kind of expertise can come into play because you can gauge the person who built the site and you can kind of tell like the knowledge that they use to implement things how trustworthy they were and you can kind of dig you can dig deeper than empire flippers is going to do in their due diligence and um yeah that's there's something wrong with what empire flippers does but you do need to dig deeper than what they they give you yeah and even though i don't think we have it on our agenda for 2020 to buy any new sites um i do think it is important to stress to the viewer um that even though you know we bought a site and we had that happen with google adsense and and the other ad networks or whatever uh i would still say that the process of buying sites is extremely valuable um so it not not necessarily Absolutely. You know, even for the end result, but for everything that you learn during the, you know, on the way, because even if you're do say, say you look at five to 10 sites, even if you miss something, you're still doing all the due diligence for those sites that you're planning on buying. You're still seeing like, okay, this one's monetized this way. This one's monetized this way. This one has links that look like this. This site is structured like this. You really, really get to see the whole picture of what a site is. And, uh, and honestly, I think that actually contributed to a lot of our understanding of online business was being involved in a few uh, deals like that. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I mean, I'm happy to purchase with them again, if we, you know, want to do that with our capital. And I would say to someone who's possibly even new, if you have $150,000 and, you know, time is what you're short on, then you're, I, I would I would recommend either spreading out that budget, that $150,000 budget on like three or four websites yeah. instead of just buying one $150,000 website. Um, but you should still, you could still buy something and have it be worth it. It's just a matter of diversifying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, for, for the more sophisticated, um, I do want to mention some possible alternatives when it comes to buying websites. You know, I know a few people that have done things this way, you know, outside of Empire Flippers. And I, and I want to I want to mention them because I think it gives maybe people a little bit of insight on how they can get sites that are more undervalued. Because I, I have a feeling and I mean, I think most of the time when you're buying something on Empire Flippers, you are really paying market value. It's hard to find sure. something that's undervalued on Empire Flipper. So, you know, uh, going into like Facebook groups of, for example, like ad networks have might have some of their own Facebook groups that they they manage or forums or something like that. You see a lot of deals or people saying, I want to get rid of my site. People saying, I want to buy my site in places like that. Other places where people who own websites congregate. congregate. Um, that's always, always a good place to to investigate deals and obviously there's an, another level of due diligence you have to do um because empire, empire flippers isn't verifying any everything for you but um i just wanted to throw that out there for for the for the people mike mm-hmm. absolutely and i know someone who does this with dropshipping sites religiously he doesn't really buy them off empire flippers that, that much but he will you know be in these facebook groups and um he'll you know consistently see if anyone wants to sell or if anyone you know, reaches out and say, you know, anyone looking to buy my website, he, he's on that. And, um, it's worked out very well for him. We've bought, um, a couple sites off market. I think one or two, I don't know. I think just one. We bought, we, we bought one dropshipping site off market. Um, and that worked out very, very well. Yeah. But yeah, these situations are a bit more high risk. Yeah. It's high risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Empire Flippers, I guess the the question is is the is the commission worth it and is the 
sale price worth it? So you have people that are professional investors that say, you know, the, the market of online assets itself is undervalued. And so if you look at it like that, then even though Empire Flippers prices are retail, it's still a good value for what you can expect a diversified portfolio to be worth in, say, 10 years. Because people believe, you know, the value of these websites is going to go from 20 to 40x to more like 40 to 60x. Yeah. I, I think one thing, another important consideration to make, uh, you mentioned the professional website investor. Um, you need to consider when you're buying a website, what sort of leverage do you have? We were talking about Matt Diggity earlier. Um, and Matt Diggity is someone who, uh, you know, buys and flips sites, you know, mainly focused on organic traffic and affiliate marketing. And one thing that's important to consider is that when Matt Diggity does that, he has a lot of uh, leverage because you know, his main focus is, is like links. Like he, you know, puts a lot of energy and time into offsite link building. Like that's his, that's kind of his area of expertise, I would say. And, you know, he has systems in place to where he can buy a site, I not only identify what needs to get done to it, but actually have the resources at his disposal um, to get that stuff done in terms of link building, in terms of content creation, and stuff like that. So I think that is very, very important, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, for 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 making a consideration as to whether you're going to buy a site. If you're going to do it, and you don't have any real leverage, anything you can in place, you can leverage to and have a plan from the get-go um I, I i think you should maybe get to the building aspect of it if you're in that position and build up mm -hmm. your systems by building your sites which you can then translate to one that you buy mm -hmm. so i'd say to wrap it up um from a buying side i would say empire flippers is a great choice if you're prepared to make an investment that will result in a, in a diversified portfolio. Yeah. So you can buy something from Empire Flippers and it could be an amazing investment or it can go south for whatever reason. So that's not the fault of Empire Flippers, but you need to be prepared and div div diversified just in case that happens. Yeah. And if you're short on time, but you're not short on money, then again, it's a really easy way to get in the game and get some hands-on experience that you can then use and, you know, apply elsewhere. But, you know, if the money that you're going to be spending is a lot to you, it's not enough to, you know, it's a, it's a lot to throw away, then you may want to consider first investing in some sort of education so that you can build your own website, really have a deep understanding of how it works. And then once you master that, you can go and buy websites off Empire Flippers or maybe even off market. And then you can sort of build them up and flip them. Yeah, yeah. Getting into it with understanding, uh, with a good understanding is key. And yeah, you pretty much wrapped it up there, Mike. But, you know, well, I want to recap something that you said real quick that you didn't say there yeah. was that if you are, if you do have more money than time, um, you said this earlier, but not in that last sentence, was make sure that you would buy, I would say, more than one website. Don't spend it all in one place. Do more uh, mini deals just, just to get yourself diversified. Yeah. And then so on the other side, if you're considering selling something on Empire Flippers, um, if you don't have a strong connection in your industry and, you know, 15. So if you don't if you sell on Empire Flippers, they're going to take somewhere between 15 and 10 percent, depending on how high value the site is. And so um, I would say if you don't have strong connections in the industry, if you're not, you know, willing to sort of put the risk in of working with someone who would buy your website and you would save you know that 15 percent, but they have the risk of backing out or screwing you or, or something like that then just you know don't worry about the 15 percent. have empire flippers handle it all and then you still get it you still get a cash out and it's much less stress on you yeah um and yeah just be on the lookout for the terms you're giving people and um just make sure that everything on your end is covered but um in our, in our experience, the 15% is well worth it, especially to get your feet wet in the sphere of selling, you know, websites for six figures and up. Yeah, well said, Mike. Well said. 
All right, let, let's take us, uh, I'll take us out of here. Buildassetsonline.com slash membership. If you want to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, we can help you build your online asset portfolio in our private Discord group. You get a private channel with us, bi-weekly office hours. It's great. Um, I think our members are having a good time. You know, I think, I think people are, they like the value in it. Um, we've gotten some really good feedback on that. Buildassetsonline.com slash playbook, our free course to learn how you can build an online asset portfolio from the ground up. So check that out as well. And thanks for listening. And we will see you in the next episode. Take it easy.